Welcome everyone. I'm Rowan Crockett, Grower Services Manager for our Northern Region, and I'll be your host for this webinar, which is being held in place of physical grower meetings for our Roma, Wallambilla, Niles, the Gums and Meandara sites. 2020 has certainly already been a big year for everyone, and while a lot of things haven't gone to plan this year, at least we have seen some slightly better rainfall within the region. This evening, you will hear updates on a variety of topics around delivering safely to your grain corp site this harvest. No doubt, some of the topics discussed will lead to further questions, and you've probably already noticed by now that on the right-hand side of your screen, there is a chat feature, um, and you can ask questions at any time. Uh, we, we have left some time available at the end of the session to, to get to questions that, that are not answered off by any of our presenters, so please feel free to, to shoot any, any queries you do have through. Um, if you do have a question that, that we're not able to, to answer on, on air tonight, then certainly we'll get the appropriate person to, to contact you and, as soon as possible to discuss your query or question following the, the webinar tonight. Um, given it's a busy time of year, I'll aim to wrap up in under an hour. So please understand that we may not be able to drill down into too much site-specific operational detail, but we'll do our best to, to cover most topics and, and please reach out if, if it does lead to any further questions. Um, to kick off our, our pres presenters tonight, um, it, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Klaus Paminger, our Chief Operating Officer, to say a few words. Good evening, Klaus. Uh, thanks for joining us and, and over to you. Hello, Rowan, and welcome to the Grain Corp <clears throat> excuse me, Grain Corp Grower webinar. Thanks for dialing in. I'm Klaus Paminger, CEO of Grain Corp. We're all looking forward to successful harvest after very challenging two years in most part of our network. I'm well aware there's some challenges still in southwestern Queensland, so I hope uh, your harvest will go okay. We're excited about the busy time coming up for growers, the local community and Grain Corp. The team, as Rowan said, will give you an update to make sure and ensure we have a safe and efficient harvest. Grain Corp underwent the demerger of its small business earlier this calendar year, um, which has left Grain Corp in a very strong financial position. That means zero debt for Grain Corp as we know it today. We've been preparing for harvest for some months now. We've been planning uh, moving equipment um, from southern positions where we employed them last year to northern positions and making sure we have that equipment uh, ready for harvest. We have acquired and built additional stackers and drive over hoppers and have purchased a significant number of new tarps. We have opened 3,000 casual positions uh, for harvest, and I'm happy to share with you, we have had 5,300 plus applicants. So we're very confident that we can fill the casual uh, vacancies for this harvest time. As Rowan mentioned, 2020 has been a challenging year and we Grain Corp have prepared for a COVID-19 harvest which means making sure we keep our customers and our staff safe. That means there will be a change in the delivery process to make sure we can all socially distance and stay safe. Game Corp has invested significant time, effort and monies in its digital platform, which includes the Fastway program at the Sample Stand in Weybridge, Crop Connect, our digital trading and marketing platform. We've got a digital optimizer platform and this harvest we will also continue on our two-day payment terms. On behalf of all of us at Grain Corp, we wish you a safe and prosperous harvest. And if you should have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you for joining us all today. Thanks, Klaus. Appreciate your time this evening and, and look forward to seeing you up in the region when, when the border opens sometime soon. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, 2020 has certainly been a year of surprises and I'm certain most would agree COVID-19 has been the biggest of them all. At Grain Corp, we're certainly taking the COVID situation very seriously and I'd now like to welcome our next guest, Brad Foster, Regional Operations Manager for Queensland, 
to share with us his team's plans to ensure our, our customers and staff remain safe and, and sites remain open for deliveries this harvest. Welcome, Brad. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Rowan, and good evening to everyone. Um, Brad, I guess, can you can you just start by giving us a, a bit of a feel for, for some of the measures your teams are implementing to, to as, as I alluded to, keep everyone safe and, and operational? Yeah, sure. As, um, you know, everyone obviously knows uh, COVID has been around since March when the restrictions were first uh, put in place and, and we've been working pretty hard with those restrictions over the last six months. So we have had a, a bit of a head start in Queensland. Um, we've had the, the sorghum harvest that came in and also the winter crop up in CQ that's um, started to come into the network over the, the last couple of weeks. Um, so we are prepared, we're, we're ready to go. Um, Cross-border health checks is a, a big one we have been working with contractors on over the last six months. Uh, so we've had a number of, of maintenance and capital programs that have been occurring. We have been uh, getting people from across the border to complete those tasks for us and um, that's been working really successfully with the measures that we've got on site to, to keep everyone safe and, and comply with the restrictions. Uh, there's been limited interaction with staff internally. Um, so for a, a fair period of time, a lot of our management team and, and support services have been dialing in remotely to check on our teams. But uh, as restrictions have lifted, we have been able to, to get out and support our teams by the same token. Um, seasonal worker health plans have been put in place at all our sites. Um, so what that means is everyone's temperature checked when they come on site for our staff. Uh, we're complying with all the, the health plans released by the Queensland Government. So we've, we've got a really robust system that's been put in place over the last six months. I guess just finally for any growers on the Western Downs that might have properties or, or the need to, to cross the border, into New South Wales, I'd really encourage you um, to apply for ag exemptions at the border. Um, so agriculture is obviously an essential uh, industry or service. Um, so if, if you know you can get a clearance from the Queensland Chief Medical Officer, you'd also need photo ID and the proof of the ag exemption, such as a property registration to be able to get across the border. So for anyone who needs to, certainly encourage you to apply early. Uh, thanks, Ron. Great. Thanks, Brad. Sounds like a lot of work been going in be behind the scenes to, to make sure the, the appropriate plans are in place. So I guess probably most importantly for everyone on, on this call tonight, what, what's it mean for, for me as a grower when I turn up with my first load? What, what's going to change? Yeah, that's a good question. Thanks. I'll um, just take everyone through the process. So there are going to be a number of changes that you will notice on site, and obviously that's because of COVID and, and the need to keep all our visitors and staff and community safe. Um, so the first one is we're going to have a, a number of QR codes placed around site, so they'll be at the entry sign, Waybridge, sample stand, at a different number of locations throughout the site. Um, so that's the same as I know with my kids, um, junior footy or or soccer or what have you, That um, and the same thing with a pub or a restaurant, uh, whenever you go to, to one of those venues, the QR codes there where you put your camera to it and, um, and sign in. So that's going to be the same at our sites. Um, Realise not everyone has a smartphone, so there still is going to be the, the manual option on site as well, so people can, can sign into the book when they get to the, the sample stand or Waybridge, depending on the site and how it works, but we'll certainly let you know how that works. Um, so uh, another key point there is um, we can't allow uh, people to, to come into the sample stand or, or Waybridge or what have you. Um, so as growers or, or truck drivers arrive, you can come up to the, the front counter or, or landing step of the sample stands, but uh, we will have to, to keep you outside of that area given our COVID restrictions um, internally. Um, what you will also need to, to bring for a big change in delivery advice forms, we have had those forms around for a, a large number of years, so it is nothing new. The new thing is that we will need those forms filled out for every load that is delivered into to the network and also for all samples. 
Um, they'll be readily available on site, so we will have them there for you, and we'll also distribute them um, to email addresses and what have you, so you can pre-populate the data in there if you like um, to to do that at home and, and make the process easier for you. Um, please contact your local site manager or grain marketer if you do need assistance with those forms. Um, as I said, they'll be required for each load and, and sample. Uh, so just to step through the, the process from there, uh, you will get a sample docket that's provided at the sample stand um, to the driver. The dri it has bigger font on the, the sample docket. So when you go to the hopper to tip, um, the driver will be asked to, to have a look at that the font on the, the sample docket to make sure the grade and everything's right to, to go into that particular storage. Um, from there, you can um, go onto the Waybridge to get your tear weight. Another really big change this year is um, warehouse is the only option uh, to drop your grain off, but you can quickly transfer that grain through Crop Connect or the Grower Hotline, uh, which Yarko will touch on for you shortly. Once uh, the gross weight is captured, there's no need to sign any forms. We're, we're trying to really limit that transaction um, between people touching things, um, but you will be able to get your delivery docket um, so if your driver and what have you needs to keep that paperwork, they certainly have that paperwork there for them. Um, so that's a process through the site. Thanks, Ryan. Great. Thanks, Brad. It all sounds pretty practical to me. I guess, um, do, do you have a view on, on whether or not it, it's likely to, to impact turnaround times at site? Yeah, that's a very good question, isn't it? Um, obviously, it, it is unknown at this stage because we, you know, haven't had too much go through the system as yet. Things are only just kicking off in in CQ. But really, I think it should speed things up, if anything. Um, as I said before, the delivery advice forms uh, need to be filled out uh, before you deliver the load. So if if everything there is pre-populated already, um, the people in the sample stands, way bridges can punch that data straight in. We're also minimising the contact as you go around the site so our hopper attendants aren't signing those individual forms. Um, so it really limits the contact and keeps people moving. So if anything, I think it'll really speed up the process. Right. Sounds like we might have a, a bit of an unintended win there then, which is, is good to hear. And, and uh, yeah, pleasing it, it's not going to make it more difficult, that's for sure. Yep. Uh, look, Brad, a couple more questions for you, pretty quick ones. And, and I guess um, coming from, from probably some of the questions I've heard and, and maybe some confusion that has been out there around what you, you may or may not be able to do. Apologies, you've probably already answered some of these, but I'll, I'll just fire them away just, just to, to clarify it for everyone so there's no doubt. Uh, yeah, the sure. first one, the first one I have heard was was the drivers won't be able to get out of their truck this year, and therefore Grain Corp staff will be unrolling tarps and and opening tailgates this year. Is is that the case? Um, no, that's not correct. It's really the same as previous years in in that respect. Um, you know, it has been in place at our sites for a number of years now, where the the truck driver is unrolling the tarp and and also opening the the tailgate. So there's no change there. Very good, thanks. Look, the the next one is I, I hear Grain Corp don't want to do grower samples this year, so growers won't be able to to drop a sample in for testing. Is that the case? No, no, that's definitely not right. Um, same as previous years as well. Um, we certainly will be testing any of those loads. I, I guess the difference this year will be um, that you'll have to bring a sample in a disposable uh, plastic bags. Uh, basically, we, we need to limit the interaction so you can't bring your old tin or ice cream container or bucket or whatever else that, that staff hand back. Uh, so what we need is a, a litre or kilo sample of grain to be able to do those tests. So if you just bring it in a Ziploc bag or some kind of disposable plastic bag, um, we'll also provide some of those bags at the, at the sample stands as well. Um, the grower delivery advice form will have to be filled out for those samples as well. Uh, so we can capture all your details there and we'll um, call through or, or text through those results as soon as we can. Um, if there are a few loads in the line, uh, we'll certainly process uh, the receivable trucks first and then get to the samples 
when we do have a break. But um, no, we'll certainly still be be testing grower samples. That's for sure. Great, thanks, Brad. Uh, another one was was some growers had heard that the the truck won't be getting a, a delivery docket as they leave site, so nothing will, will return back to farm or nothing for the carriers to to keep as a copy of for their weights, et cetera. Is that the case? Um, again, no, we will be providing a, a sample docket. Um, sorry, there'll be a sample docket as you go through the site and then a delivery docket when you get your tear weight to um, to head off site. So those both those um, pieces of, of paper or forms will be available for you. Great. Thanks, Brad. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for your time and, and good luck to you and your team over the, the coming months. Thanks very much and hope everyone has a successful harvest. Uh, our next guest this evening is, is Simon Ward, uh, Area Manager for, for the Western Downs region. Evening, Simon, and welcome. Yeah, thanks, Rowan. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, look, Simon, I, I understand it's been a, a pretty busy couple of months for you and your team. Can you just give us a bit of, a bit of insight into what's been happening? Yeah, it's been a uh, high of activity the last few months and um, quite refreshing actually the last couple of years. But uh, we've been um, busy recruiting staff, obviously lost a few uh, over the time with the last three years in drought. So uh, a couple of new site managers come on, uh, some full-time grain handlers and um, along with that, uh, the drought's done some positive things for us, which was... Uh, remove all the grain from our depots so um, we could do some critical maintenance and uh, put us in a good position um, mechanically to to get some of those jobs done over time. So uh, Also, we've, been, we've had a lot of contractors in recently, uh, bunk, bunker works, uh, some reinstatement of some old um, storages, some upgrades to some old storages, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, thanks, Ron. Yeah, back to you, Mark. Yeah. Very good. No, look, it uh, it sounds like you're all, all in place and, and ready to go. I guess you, you touched on on rebuilding your core group of staff. Can you just give us a quick run through who who are in the the key posts this year? Yeah, mate. Uh, so fairly fresh across uh, all of our sites uh, with some key support roles uh, at uh, supporting those people. So. Uh, if I start at the West, Roma West uh, is um, Anthony Thrupp, and he also oversees Wallambilla. Wallambilla will be supervised at harvest time by Jay Marriage, who comes from the Downs, and um, there's some experience there. If we move to Miles, Barry Melia, he will look after this site, and um, if we move uh, back south, Mandara and the Gums, Mandara is managed by Fred Smith, who oversees the gums also, but will be supervised at harvest by Brad Clark. Very good. Thank you. And and I, I guess similar format, can you just give us a feel for at a, at a site level what what commodities and segregations you'll be, be taking this year? Yeah, sure. So um, starting again at Roma, Roma will be chickpeas, wheat, barley. Uh, Wallambilla will be wheat and barley. Miles, chickpea, wheat and barley, Mandara, wheat and chickpeas, and the gums will be barley and wheat. Right. And and what about opening hours there? Can you give us a feel for, for what, what you might be able to run? Yeah, it's always a million-dollar question, and um, we've prepared ourselves for two shifts across all sites um, in the Western Downs. So we're, we're prepared um, from a staff point of view, for two shifts, but totally dependent for uh, length of shifts on what the receivers are that day, obviously, and, and how, how it can benefit the grower. But just encourage everyone to talk with their site managers and, and um, we can help where we can. Very good. And, and look, yeah, you probably led into my next question there, just around communication and, and the importance of it. Can you just give us a feel for, for what info you'd you and your team are looking to hear from growers both both in the lead in and during harvest and, and probably on, on the flip side, how you'll be communicating key information throughout the, the harvest period? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, yeah, the, the site managers, obviously, um, they can't be 100% prepared if they don't know it's coming. So if we can just have open lines of communications through our site managers, 
um, even grower merchants likewise. Um, and then uh, on the flip side of that, we'll use our um, Telstra integrated messaging to send out messages and updates on sites the best and um, as early as we can for rain events or whatever might be that could hold you up at site and um, us at every grower do the same thing with the site manager and um, grower merchant. Also, um, sorry, Rowan. You go. Just end the harvest. Um, we can't fix what we don't know. So if everyone, the post-harvest NPS survey, if we can all jump on there and, and have a say, whether it be positive or negative, um, it, it helps us improve our team. And uh, being a fresh team this year, it'll be well received. So. Yep, certainly agree with that. Look, that, that's probably it from me. Thanks, Simon, for your time and, and all the best for, for you and your team over, over the next couple of months. Hopefully it all runs smoothly. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Uh, next, next guest the, this evening, uh, I'd like to introduce Jaco Vandermeer, uh, who's our grain marketer for the Western Downs region. Uh, welcome, Jaco, and, and thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks, Ron. Good evening and, and say hi to everyone out there. Yeah, I guess um, my my first question is is probably leads in with with the view that that it has been a number of years since quite a few people uh, have delivered to their their local site. Just wondering if you'd give us a a bit of a checklist on on what you think growers should focus on on ticking off before they arrive at at the site with their first load this year. Yes, thanks, Ron. I think the first step is to for growers to update their NGR details. Make sure you can log in. Make sure your mobile numbers your bank details, all that stuff that's important to make sure you get a payment and that if someone wants to communicate with you, is up to date. I think the next step is Crop Connect. We'll touch base on it a bit later on, but make sure you can download the app. You've got it on your phone and you've, you've got, you are registered and you've got all your passwords updated. And then the last thing, um, Brad has touched base on that, is a delivery advice forms. You know, make contact with the site or, or with your grain marketer and uh, we can email it to you, pre-populate it, and put it in your truck so that when the wheel starts rolling, you know, you've got everything sorted. Over to your own. Great. Thanks, Yako. Some, some very useful tips there. I appreciate it. Um, look, I, I guess the, the next one I was going to ask you about, we, we've probably done a bit of work in the background on, on a few things over the last couple of years to, to hopefully make Grain Corp a bit easier to do business with. Can you, can you just give us a bit of insight into what they are? Yes, Ron, um, we, we decided to give growers an extra month of storage. So how it will work is we give you the month of delivery plus, plus two calendar months after the month of delivery. So if you deliver in October, we give you October, November, and December free storage, and storage will start counting from January. And then the second one is our two-day payment. That means if you sell your grain to Grain Call, uh, on the Monday and you make the transfer on the Monday, we should pay you by the Wednesday. And that's very helpful for a, for a good cash flow. Over to your own. Great. Thanks, Jaco. Look, the other one I think is very important this year in, in uh, un, under this, this COVID environment that we're operating is, is Crop Connect. Can, can you just give us a bit of an insight if, if, if I'm a grower and haven't logged in for a few years or, or indeed haven't used Crop Connect before, what I can expect to see there? Yes, Ron, uh, Crop Connect is actually your one-stop shop. It's the information in the palm of your hands. I see it services two areas. The one is grower deliveries. Um, if you if you're able to log in to your uh, to Crop Connect, you're able to see your grower the detail of your grower deliveries. You know, truck regers, weights, screenings, test weights, all that stuff. And you can also populate a grower delivery report to get a good summary of of your grower deliveries. The next thing, next stop is it's a marketing platform. Um, if you log in there, you. you you can see the daily bids and offers. You can see who's got the best price out there. You can transfer your grain, and you can also pre-select buyers or preferred buyers that you feel comfortable with. Um, and then lastly, if you sell to Grain Corp, you can also um, generate RCTIs, you know, if a taxman wants that, um, and that's also very helpful. Instead of, say, calling someone um, in Tamworth to generate a form like that, you can help yourself over to your own. Great, thanks. No, certainly uh, sounds well worthwhile taking five minutes to, to get registered and, and familiarise yourself. Um, look, that, that being said, 
online isn't isn't for everybody or, or there are times where where people may have difficulty transacting etc or, or need help with a question that it isn't available on, on Crop Connect platform. What what other options have we got for growers if, if they do do need a bit more help? Um, um, we've got a team in Tamworth and also a team in Wagga. So if you call the team in Tamworth, the, the number is one eight hundred grains, or email email them at growers at graincorp.com.au. You will get uh, contact with a very helpful team in Tamworth. But please note, sometimes the lines might be very busy and you might be transferred to Wagga. So if someone from further south answers the phone, you know what's going on. This team can also help you with registering on Crop Connect, you know, getting the delivery reports, transfer grain for you, and they are very helpful to guide you through the whole process. Um, and as I said, they are a young team, very energetic, and they, they're very helpful. Thanks, Rowan. Great. Thanks. And, and yeah, please please do do make the most of that service if, if you do need help. Look, the um, the next one I was going to ask you about, Yako, is, is Croptimizer. Not new, it has been around for, for a few years, but but not everyone's familiar with us. Can you just give us a bit of a feel for, for what is Croptimizer and, and how it creates value for growers? Yes, Ron. Uh, first thing is you need, you need to be to have an eligible load. Um, you, you need to have grower equity, meaning by that you need to have enough of the better grade in the bank for you to be able to upgrade that load. And lastly, the stack average needs to be good enough for you to be able to upgrade that load. Um, the, just to get back on the, um, sorry, uh, eligibility, eligibility of the load, um, your protein needs not to be more than 3% from the target, um, your screening is 1%, and your test weight 2 kilogram per hectoliter. And the question from growers normally is, how will I know I've got a load that uh, will make the criteria? You will get an SMS from our grower services team, and they, all the details will be on there to contact them to be able to upgrade that load. Important actually um, to note is that you need to make these upgrades before you transfer your grain to the next buyer, because if that grain is in someone else's ownership, we cannot upgrade that load for you. That's important. Thanks, Rowan. Great. Thanks, Jaco. That's it from me. Thanks for your time tonight and, and good luck with the next couple of months. Thank you. Uh, look, that's it for our presenters in this evening's session. Um, it doesn't look like we, we have got any questions uh, that have come through on the, the line, so that, that probably concludes our, our uh, session for this evening. Um, if, if you do have any questions that, that do come up following this session, please do... Um, reach out to, to the appropriate people prior to, to harvest. Um, we will be sending out a contact list of, of all of the key people for, for your region in the next couple of days. So please keep an eye out for that email um, and, and make sure you do update the contacts in your phone prior to, to harvest time. Um, and look, the only thing left from me is, is thanks very much for your attendance and, and wish everyone a safe and, and trouble-free harvest. Thank you. <laughs>